video I want to talk about painting animals or in my case it will be a bird I will be painting this cute duckling in a loose watercolor style I think this style is especially appropriate for somebody furry and fluffy because it easily allows us to show the texture of fur or feathers. First thing I'm going to do is sketch out my duck. I found this photo on Unsplash. I left you the link in the description below if you want to give this a try as well. I will be using quite a few colors. You see them on the screen right now. I just like creating kind of rainbow effect in that style of painting. I think it just looks fun and joyous. And this is definitely a fun duck, but you don't have to use this many colors, obviously, where you can use similar colors or just stick to various shades of the same color. The important thing here is to have fun and to use your favorite colors. And I'm hoping this painting will be yet another proof of the fact that colors in painting don't matter as much as tonal relationships. So going from light to dark is more important than trying to copy the colors you see in your reference photo or in your subject. I'm going to start painting wet on wet. I spritzed my paper a little bit from my spray bottle. It's just very slightly damp, it's not wet at all. I'm using a round brush and I'm going to distribute my colors not worrying too much about filling in the outline or showing any details. I am looking at tonal relationships in this duck and I'm trying to replicate that on paper. Of course I'm trying to distribute the colors somehow. I don't want like all oranges and yellows on in one spot or turquoise and purple in another spot. I will try to balance them throughout the painting and create a pleasing harmony in color distribution on my on my work all paper. See, because I spritzed the paper, the colors float a little bit and mix together, not completely, but I'm getting soft edges. I'm a little hesitant because the painting is fairly small, at least for me it's uh, 12 by 16 inches. I have fairly small brush, but as I continue painting I will loosen up a little bit and um, the painting will go faster. And to help me do that I'm going to use some splattering. You see me sprinkling yellow. And I also want to just create some random marks on paper because I feel like I started with a little hesitation, but I want a lot of texture and I want this painting to be fun and in loose style, like I said in the beginning. So basically creating a multicolored blob here on paper, vaguely resembling a duck, having fun with my colors and trying to get away from the colors I see in the reference photo. It's very restrained palette there, but I want a rainbow effect in my painting. It's important to connect your painting to all three sides of your paper. That always looks good. And if the color floated a little too much, it's very easy to pick up while it's still wet. I'm using a clean flat brush and a piece of paper towel. So here's my color blob. I'm going to let it dry completely before I move to the next stage of my painting. I'm going to use a different angle. I was getting a lot of glare from my lights on wet watercolor. I think this way it will be easier for you to see. My first color blob was the mid-tone areas on the dark and now I am going to create the dark areas. I'm using a smaller brush. This is a quarter inch dagger brush, my favorite. And again, I am not looking at the colors in the reference photo. I am looking at light, mid-tone and dark areas. At this stage I'm actually working on dark areas on the duck. Using colors straight out of the pan, they will lighten when they dry, so I need them to be really saturated. 
and again switching between different colors I keep using purple and blue and indigo to paint the darks and the reason I'm using these colors not because I see them but because they will give me dark saturated tone if I use yellow it will be very hard for me or impossible for me to achieve saturated dark tone with it so I have to use darker colors to create darker tone and if the tone is not super dark I can use something like upper pink or maybe some reds and warmer oranges as well to create a slightly lighter area like medium dark tones Also very important when painting animals to pay attention to your edges. A variety of edges is always important in watercolor painting. You want to have hard and soft edges, but when painting fur or feathers, it's especially important because it creates the realistic texture in your painting. And you see me right now softening the edge, trying to give them that fluffy top of the head that he has. And also you saw on the chest, I used the brush strokes where one edge was hard edge under the chin, but on his chest, I softened my brush strokes with a little bit of water. That type of brush stroke is especially important for loose painting when one edge is hard and the other edge is softened because it allows us to blend colors together. I explain all the watercolor brush strokes in detail with examples and step-by-step -step photos in a guide that I offer for free to all my students and viewers of my channel. You can find it on my website, kseniaanis.com. I left you the sign-up link in the description to this video below. So check that out. I think it will be useful if you if you want to expand maybe your repertoire of uh, vertical brush strokes a little bit or just to kind of refresh your memory. The colors I pick for the second layer are basically the same colors I used for the first layer. I don't want to layer over different colors too much because that's a potential for creating mud. So using approximately the same colors, but in higher saturation. And you will notice that I'm ignoring the highlights on the dock because as in many of my paintings, I will be adding highlights last with gouache. He doesn't have a lot of highlights, but some are present there. checking to see that my paper is dry. I already had colors float everywhere so at this stage I want to make sure I'm painting wet on dry because I need more precision and if I make a mistake I can always lift color with some clean water and blot it with my paper towel and it will basically be gone if it's um, just freshly applied color. So that's why it's important to in watercolor to work in, in areas, not to jump from place to place, but work on an area, make sure it's where it needs to be, and then move to the next one. That way you can control better the water content on your paper. You need to be always aware how much water you have on paper. And like I said, I'm using a whole bunch of colors in this painting just because I wanted it to be that um, to create that rainbow effect if you want to stick to just a couple of primary or secondary colors you could do that just stick to primary palette or secondary palette that would be an interesting exercise that's a good option as well if you don't know which colors are primary or secondary you could take my class that i created especially for beginner watercolorists it's called from zero to watercolor hero and you can also find that information how to find that class in the description below and you will also find a discount there on the class that i offered to all the viewers of my youtube channel we can do a little splattering as well with purples and blues like i said i am trying to connect my subject my duck to all three sides of my paper 
and also to create movement in my painting because he's marching forward very decisively so I don't want the painting to be static I want to accentuate that movement all right and the last stage of my painting we need to find those highlights that I painted over just a few of them on the beak in the in his eye and on his foot maybe a couple so just using white gouache you can use white ink you can use white pencil if you have one or a gel pen or a white marker I like the control that white gouache gives me I can use the same watercolor brush for it using still using my dagger brush and I'm just going to make a few corrections and find a few highlights on the duck that only takes a second or two so we're almost done here I think this will be a fun entry in the create with the alphabet challenge that I'm participating in the duck will be letter D and if you stick with me subscribe to the channel maybe not to lose future videos you will see all 26 animals and birds and maybe some other creatures that I will create for different letters of the alphabet over upcoming weeks All right, my painting is finished. Let me sign it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one here on Tamarab Studios channel. And please let me know in comments what you think about this technique, about this approach to pet portraits and what you think about the result, about my duck. So what do you think about my duck? I like your duck. He's an assault duck. <laughs> Why? Because he's in a bad mood. Look at him. Yeah, he looks like he's one leg, but I see his other leg now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.